Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today we're going to talk about imposter plants. Now, what is an imposter plant? Because quite frankly, I'm not sure if I just made this up or if it's like a real thing, but an imposter plant is a plant that looks so similar to another type of plant that I often find people confuse it for said plant. So they are completely different in completely different groups, completely different genus, species, all of that jazz uh, than the plant that they actually look like. So. Does that make sense? Good, because that's what we're going to be talking about today. So the first one I want to talk about today is this ever so lovely Begonia contrafolia, and this is a variety called Ruber macula. And this plant, I'd say, can you guess it already? It looks like it's dead on a Pilea peperomioides. So Pilea peperomioides is the friendship plant or the Chinese money plant. It goes by many names and aliases, but this is a plant that is nowhere near related to a pilea. So this is a begonia, and it looks very different than many begonias, as it's a much more succulent begonia. It's a little bit less about the foliage, but that's why I was interested in getting this plant. It looks so similar to a pilea peperomioides, but it's not. I've never really had good luck with begonias in the past, uh, but this one I figured I would give it a try because these leaves are much more succulent and um, how that translates is it's a little bit less scary to grow than a regular like Rex begonia, which I think this is a type of Rex begonia if I'm not mistaken. I don't really know enough about begonias yet, so I could be speaking wrong on that, but those types of begonias in my experience are very difficult to grow. They really need a lot of attention, a lot of humidity, and you can easily kill it. But I've had this one for not quite a year, mind you, maybe like eight months around that, pushing it. So uh, I feel like I'm getting pretty comfortable with this plant and it's grown quite a bit since I've had it in my possession. So I've been really enjoying growing this little imposter plant to the Pilea peperomioides, which is the ever so lovely Begonia contrafolia variety Ruber macula. So a really incredible plant. If you've been looking to get into begonias and you like the look of the Pilea peperomioides, I would recommend giving this one a try. I think it's very easy. I just keep it moist, as I know begonias like to stay moist. I do keep this one in the vicinity of a grow light, but I don't think it's really living in extra, any extra humidity. Uh, my bedroom does stay a little bit more humid, but I'd say at its peak, it's around like 65%. So that's still roughly, you know, standard household humidity in the summertime. A really excellent imposter plant. I highly recommend giving it a try. The next one I want to talk about today is this little friend right here. So this is a Hoya. This is a Hoya linearis. But I think that this plant looks pretty much dead on like Spanish moss, which is Tillandsia eucinoides, which is an air plant. And Spanish moss is what's usually like growing frilly from the trees in at least the southern United States. I'm sure it grows in other places throughout the world as well. But that is where I know it of. And if you travel or if you are from that area of the United States or wherever else in the world, has Spanish moss growing abundant from the trees, I'm sure you can see what I mean about this. Or if you just see it in your local plant shops, I sell it in the plant shop where I work. So it's a very common plant. And this lovely little fuzzy Hoya right here, I think really does give out that same vibe. And I feel like that's why people love Hoya linearis so much because when it's a long dangling vine, much more prevalent than the one that I have in my hand here, it really does kind of resemble Spanish moss and give you that boho uh, feeling and just really just give you that vibe that you're just kind of sitting underneath a tree in the jungle. So a really lovely plant. This plant's a little bit more <laughs> difficult to grow than standard Hoyas um, as it prefers a much more moisture. The stem is much more finer, the leaves are much finer. Um, this Hoya likes a lot more moisture than many of the other Hoyas that I grow in my home. And it's also a total magnet for mealybug. I see a couple mealybugs on here already, and if you don't like dealing with pests, Hoya linearis is not for you. This thing is a pest magnet. I'm always finding something on it. I'm always cleaning it. I'm always treating it. So um, if you need a plant that you'd like to pay a little bit more mind to, then I would definitely recommend Hoya linearis. But if you are uh, not feeling that type of way, then I would say steer clear of this plant um, completely. But it's really a lovely plant to grow. It does give you such a nice... Uh, relaxing vibe and I'm all about that. I love relaxing. So let's talk about this one next and this is a Peperomia scandens and as the name suggests it looks very similar to a Philodendron scandens or Philodendron heteraceum whatever you want to refer to it as um, and I think sometimes they even call this 
the philodendron peperomia because of the way it really does look like your standard trailing philodendron. The leaf has the same exact shape. If it gets heavy enough as these go grow quite upright, but once they get heavy, as you can see with these vines down here, uh, they start to trail like a philodendron would. So it really does have a very similar look to it. Um, this is a plain green version of philodend or philodendron. See, I'm already calling it a philodendron. Uh, this is a plain green version of Peperomia scandens. I think the more common one is surprisingly the variegated version. I think that's actually pretty uh, common in garden centers and big box stores, at least in the United States. Uh, so it's not a very hard plant to come by at all. But this is the plain green version, and that's why I kind of like this one a little bit better because it really does resemble uh, philodendron uh, scandens or heteraceum a little bit more. This is a uh, super easy plant to grow. It doesn't require a whole lot of light. I keep this on top of my microwave, which is a ways away from a window, although it is in the vicinity of a grow light. And as it's a peperomia, it doesn't require a large amount of water. I only just give it like a little sprinkle of water when I can feel in the leaves that they're starting to lose its succulents um, and get a little bit flimsy. Uh, if I gave this plant more light, would it probably flourish? Yes, but it's doing totally fine in the conditions that I'm giving it. So I can say wholeheartedly, this is a very easy peperomia to grow. It really just wants to live. It really wants to grow, just like your standard philodendron. So if you can grow a philodendron scandens, you can grow a peperomia scandens. Really don't have much else to say about this plant other than if you are looking for that trailing, jungly, jungle vibe in your home, I think Peperomia Scandens is a really excellent one to try out. As well as this next one I would like to talk about today, so I only have a small piece of this because uh, mine is quite fixed into the area in my home where it's growing. Uh, this is a Senecio Macroglossus, and you might remember this little piece from a video I filmed in the past because it's, it's totally rooted up and I should probably go ahead and give it a pot when we're finished. They call this wax ivy and this really does look dead on like your standard English ivy, the variegated version of course because this is a variegated wax ivy, but this is such a fun plant to grow the way it grows. Um, it's very similar to ivy, uh, but not exactly. I think it grows in a much more uh, nicer manner where ivy's gonna cling on to your wall and destroy whatever area you have it in if it does flourish, which most of the time it doesn't flourish because it just gets spider mites and doesn't get enough light and they just kind of die. So, uh, Sinitia macroglossus behaves a little bit more like like a Hoya or a Serapegia where it's going to kind of wrap around whatever you have it. So it's not going to cling into your walls and ruin it. It's going to uh, start to grab on to any like hanging, it grabs onto my hanging macrame um, on my plant hangers and it grabs onto other vines in the area. So it's actually quite cute the way it behaves. So I really appreciate it. And as I was saying, Ivy is kind of a nightmare to grow. Senecio macroglossus, I find, is so much easier to grow. I just hang it up in a bright window, I water it when these leaves lose their succulents, um, and it's good to go. And speaking of which, the leaves are super succulent. It's actually quite incredible. They get really thick. They get a really thick cuticle on them um, as they age, and uh, it just feels so nice seeing leaves that look exactly like ivy, but fooling people when they come into my home and saying, feel this plant, and they think it's ivy, and it's not ivy, so. A really great plant, truly an imposter plant. Everybody who sees this plant thinks it is 100% English ivy until I tell them to touch it. And they touch it and their mind is blown because it's a succulent. It's not a leafy plant, it's a succulent. So it's so incredible. And if you maybe heard Senecio macrolosis and maybe Senecio rings a bell, that's because Senecio, or at least it used to be because it's been reclassified at this point, but Senecio includes things like string of bananas, string of pearls, string of dolphins, and all of those lovely plants, even things like pickle plant. So there are so many incredible Senecios, and Senecio macroglossus is just another one to add to the list. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about this one, because I just talked about this in a recent video, but we're going to talk about it again. So this is Raphidophora tetrasperma, and they call this commonly mini monstera, or they even sell it, I think, um, on the availability list sometimes is Monstera Minima, but this is not a Monstera. I'm sure many of you are familiar with uh, Monstera Deliciosa, which they call uh, the split leaf philodendron, even though it's not a philodendron, or they call it the Swiss cheese plant, and it has a very similar appearance to this Raphidophora tetrasperma right here. So, while this plant might be often sold as a mini Monstera, it's actually a Raphidophora, which is a completely different genus than Monstera. Although they are in the same family, they both fall into the Araceae family, which uh, we commonly refer to as Aroids in the plant community, as that's a subfamily. 
um, in that bigger family, this Monstera, or, oh my gosh, see, I'm calling it a Monstera, I'm getting fooled. This Raphidophora falls in that category and is just as easy to grow as any of those plants. So if you can grow a Monstera, if you can grow a Pothos, if you can grow a Philodendron, you can grow Raphidophora. In fact, Raphidophora, I find, is a very vigorous grower. If you can see my trellis behind me here, um, it's full up to the ceiling. It's a little ratty down here, but up at the top, it's very full of some lovely... Monstera minima, as they call it, but Raphidophora tetrasperma. Sometimes they even call it Monstera ginny. So there are a bunch of different names for this plant. Misnomers, as you might say. In all realness, this is a Raphidophora tetrasperma. So a really incredible, easy to grow plant. Uh, used to cost a lot of money, but now it's much more affordable. So it's one that you'll find quite often um, in your local houseplant stores, whether it's in a small pot, in a large hanging basket, or even already growing up a trellis. This is one that's quite, read uh, quite readily available and quite incredible to grow. I highly recommend trying it out. But it does look very similar, as you can see, to your standard Monstera Deliciosa. And we're gonna talk about one more plant today. Uh, we're gonna talk about this bad boy right here. So this is an Amidrium zipelianum, but I think that this plant looks like a palm. Does it not look like a palm? Does it not look like a total mess of palm? The way that these leaves uh, are structured really does look like a palm frond. So I think that the way I have this sitting in my home and it's just kind of sitting up top and I'm um, slightly hidden behind other things, it really does look like palm leaves pointing through and people often point out or refer to it as a palm before I'm like, that is not a palm, that is a vining, wily plant. Uh, so yeah, I really did want to talk about this one today. I feel like out of all the plants on my list today, this is probably the one that's uh, most difficult to come by. But I think it's such an incredible imposter plant the way um, it's an aroid. Like it's related to philodendrons and, and the raphidophora I just talked about, pothos, um, philodendron, I said philodendron already, all, all of those bad boys. This this um, Amidrium zipelianum is very, very closely related to all of those. So you can see um, how it grows on the vines here. It looks very similar, but when you look at the leaf, it really does straight up look like a palm. So it's, it's a very interesting plant. I think it's so cool. I don't understand uh, why this one doesn't get more love. So I'll see it just kind of curled up, hanging out under the Soltech Solutions aspect light behind me, which of course I will leave my discount code in the description if you wanna get 15% off yourself. But this is just a super easy plant. I find it wilted, I give it water, it perks right back up and it's given me zero issues. It's only given me uh, new growth and love and I just try to go ahead and love it back as much as I can because it is such an incredible plant. So I think that's gonna about do it today. Imposter plants, plants that look like other plants that are completely different plants. Can I explain that any better than that? No, I don't think so. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time!